exercise 3-1. In this exercise, we're going to complete the formulas over here. And we're also going to build three charts based on the data in the worksheet. So let's get started. This is total revenues. To calculate total revenues earned by each salesperson for the travel agency, we need to understand the rules for calculating revenue. For example, Bob Cook sold 482 air tickets. For each air ticket, the agency charges a flat fee of $200. These are the hotel revenues generated by Bob Cook. The hotel gets a 10% commission from these hotel revenues. And finally, rail tickets. The hotel makes $80 service fee for each rail ticket sold. So now that we know the sources of revenue for each salesperson, let's enter the formula. So revenue from air tickets would be number of air tickets sold multiplied by the service charge per ticket. Then we add that to the hotel revenues multiplied by the commission rate. And then we add that to the rail ticket sold multiplied by the service charge per rail ticket. And that's our formula for Bob Cook. We press enter. And that's the answer. Now, for the rest of these uh, cells, we could simply copy this formula. To copy the formula, you see this square over here on the lower right-hand corner. Point your mouse until it changes into a crosshair, like what it looks like now, and then pull it all the way down. All right. Now that we've done that, you'll see that there are some green squares here on the um, upper right hand corner so it seems like there's some problems with these formulas furthermore these two formulas are actually showing up as a blank so let's see what happened to the formula after we copied it okay for Alice Ma the formula is B7 times B18 however that's wrong because B18 is actually the commission rate for the hotel this should actually be B17. Revenue from hotels is C7 times B19. Again, that's wrong. This should be B18. And revenue from rail tickets is D7 times B20, which is blank. We need to correct that and make it B19. Okay, so this number looks better. So what's going on here? What's going on is that when we copy this formula, since all the references here are relative, relative means that we use the normal way of referencing the cell, which is the column followed by the row reference. Since we're using relative references, these references adjusted when we, they were copied a few rows below. So in other words, B6 will become B7, B17 will become B18, C6 will become C7, B18 will become B19, and so on. And uh, that's not the right behavior. For this formula, we want B6 to turn into B7, but we want B17 to remain as B17. Same thing with C6. We want C6 to become C7 when we copy it one row below, but we want B18 to stay as B18. So we're going to put a dollar sign in front of the row and column references of every cell whose reference we do not want to adjust if we copy this formula to a new row. So I make B17, B18, and B19 an absolute reference. An absolute reference is just Another way to reference a cell, but we put a dollar sign in front of the column and in front of the row reference. And this way, when we copy this formula, these absolute references will remain fixed and will not adjust. So let's see the effect of doing this now. I press enter. Okay, the answer is the same as it was before. And now I'm going to copy the formulas. 
Okay, and this time they look right. And if I were to double click to see what happened, you'll see that for Alice Ma, B17, B18, and B19 did not adjust. Same thing with Jason Tam. Same thing with the rest. And that illustrates the difference between a relative reference and an absolute reference. These are important concepts to know when you're writing formulas that you're going to copy to another location later on. Now let's fill in these formulas. For each column, we're going to calculate the total, the average, the highest amount, and the lowest amount. So let's get started. First, let's do totals. For totals, we have two choices. We can use the addition operator, or we can use a function called sum. We'll try both methods. First, let's use the addition operator. Equal b6 plus b7 plus b8 plus b9 plus b10. And I press enter, and that's the result. And furthermore, I can use the fill handle and pull this to the right. And that also fills in the formulas for these columns. And if you double click, you'll see that all the relative references adjusted one column to the right. Okay, so that's one way to do it. Now I'll show you another way to do it. Instead of using the addition operator, we can use something called sum. S-U-M. Sum is a function. And the minute you type the function, you'll see that a uh, list of suggestions shows up. So you can simply select it from the drop-down list and you don't have to type the whole function name. Now the way to use a function is the function name followed by an open parenthesis followed by the parameters or the arguments that the function expects. These are simply the inputs that you give to the function, the inputs that it has to work with. In our case, for the sum function, it expects to receive the cell references of the values that it needs to add up. So in our case, our cell references are B6 to B10. I select it with the mouse, and you'll see that the arguments have been typed in by Excel automatically for me. And the syntax or the rule for writing this uh, reference is B6 colon B10. This is called a range reference. So a range reference references a group of cells or a range. And the way to do it is just the starting cell reference, B6, followed by a colon, followed by the ending cell reference, or B10. And you can do this for any range. All right, so that's um, the use of the sum function to calculate the total air tickets. And I press enter, and the result will be the same as if we had used the addition operator. And I can also copy this to the other columns. And now when I double click, you'll see that in C11, you have sum of C6 to C10. In D11, you have sum of D6 to D10. And in column E, you have sum of E6 to E10. Now, the sum function can be very helpful, especially if you're going to add lots of cells, like let's say 200 cells. If you had to use the addition operator to write that formula, it would take you a long, long time. But with the sum function, you just simply need to type the starting cell reference and the ending cell reference separated by a colon. Now let's go ahead and do the others. Average. For average, we're going to use the average function. Equal. Average. Okay, and um, I'm just going to use the suggestion here. And I'm going to select B6 to B10, and there it is. For highest, I'm going to use a function called max. Okay, and select it from the list. And I select B6 to B10. Okay, and there you go. And finally, for lowest, I'm going to use a function called min. And 
going to select B6 to B10. All right, now that I've entered the three functions here, I can copy the three of them all at the same time. So I point to the fill handle and I drag them all together. And I'm going to select these values, these values, and I'm going to format them with decimal points and commas. And there you have it. We've calculated the total, average, highest, and lowest. We've been slowly working our way through the spreadsheet and now we're almost done, but we still have to calculate the bonus that will be awarded to each salesperson. So let's understand how the bonus is calculated first. You'll see that each salesperson has generated revenues for the travel agency. Now the rule for calculating the bonus is over here. So let's try to understand what it means. What this means is that based on the revenue generated by the salesperson, if the salesperson has generated more than $25,000 in revenues, he or she will get a commission rate of 9%. If he or she did not meet the, the minimum amount of $25,000, the commission rate would be 4%. So let's get started. We're going to use a function called if to calculate this because there's two possible answers. So the way to use it is equal if. Now if comes with three arguments and when you type the open parenthesis you'll see the pattern or the expected arguments. The first argument is the logical test. The logical test is the condition that the if function is going to test for. And if this condition is true, the answer of the if function will be the second argument, the value of the second argument. If the logical test is false, the answer of the if function will be the value of the third argument. So let's um, enter our if function now. Our condition will be based on the total revenues. So I'm calculating the bonus for Bob Cook. The condition will be if the total revenues by Bob Cook, which is in E6, is greater than or equal to the minimum amount, which is 25,000, but I use the cell reference to be more flexible in case we decide to change the threshold in the future. So this is my first argument, comma. Now, if this is true, his bonus would be the total revenue multiplied by the commission rate in F17. If this is false, that means um, Bob Cook did not exceed the threshold, then his commission would be total revenue multiplied by the lower commission rate that's in F19. And that's the formula. That's the if function. I press enter. And based on the calculation, Bob Cook is going to receive 12587 cents, which uh, means he got a commission of 9% because his revenue exceeds the threshold amount. And as usual, we're going to try and copy this formula to the rest of the cells, except we need to remember to make absolute references out of E17, because we don't want this to adjust, F17, and F18. So I click and I drag up to here. Okay, and now if at some point in the future I decide to increase my threshold, because um, it seems like most of the salespersons easily exceeded my threshold, let's say I were to change, to change this to 75,000, you'll see that the if function recalculates. Okay, And um, we'll set that back to 25,000 for now. 
Okay, and we'll complete the uh, total average highest and lowest bonus by copying uh, these formulas. And we're done. We've completed all of the formulas in this exercise. Next, we're going to format this worksheet so that it looks more attractive and more visually presentable. Now that we've finished entering all our formulas, let's format our worksheet. The first place to start is the report heading. We'll make these three rows um, a little bit bigger in terms of the font size. So I'm going to increase this to 22. Now normally the um, cell height will also expand along with the um, expansion in the font size. But right now these um, cell heights didn't seem to expand so now the uh, text looks a bit squished. No problem. We're going to uh, format the row height and I'm just going to type it in directly. You normally don't have to do this, but since um, my cell height did not change along with the font size, I'm forced to do this. Okay, 0 0.63 looks like a good height, so I'm going to enter that for the other two rows as well. Alright, now another effect I'd like is I would like to center this text because it's a report title. So I use my mouse to click and drag from A1 to F1 and then I click on this button called merge. Okay, And if you expand it, you'll actually see that the default choice is called merge and center. What this will do is it will combine or merge all the selected cells and then center whatever is the content in those cells into the merged or combined cell. So let's uh, see what it does. Okay, and right now B1, C1, D1, E1, and F1 have merged with A1 so that now there's only A1. And the content has been centered in this um, region, which is exactly what I want. I do the same for A2. A2 to F2 merge. A3 to F3, merge. Great. And now I can put a background color. And uh, let me choose this one. And I change the um, text color to white. Now here are my column headings. I'm going to make them bold so that they stand out more. I'm going to put the same background color and I'm going to convert them to white. I'm going to put a um, border above this row, a top border, to separate it from the input cells and I'm going to put a bottom border here. Okay, And I'm also going to merge and center this one. Background color, change it to white. And here I'm going to um, put a background color, bold, change them to white. I'm also going to put a top and bottom border. Okay, and there you have it. Our worksheet now looks a lot more readable than, than previously. Oops, forgot the top and bottom border for this one too. Okay, there you go.